as we get started, our sermon comes out of chapter 5 of the letter, the first letter that Peter wrote. 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you to him be the dominion forever and ever. Let us pray. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, as we gather before you today, Father, we ask you to speak to us. Father God, we ask that you would speak through each of us every day. Open our eyes that we may see clearly the message you have sent. Open our ears that we may hear it plain. Father God, open our minds and give us understanding. Open our hearts that they are not only able, but that they are willing to receive the message you sent today. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. My book has a title on uh, this passage. It's called Shepherd of the Flock. The, these are instructions that God has given to the elders and the leaders of the church, of his kingdom, of those who know him. But underlying that is also a message for all Christians in a world that is broken to shepherd the flock to lead those who are lost to Christ. We, we see so much in our society of the terrible and painful things that take place. We see families that suffer from sickness and disease and cancers and diabetes and uh, strokes and dementias and Alzheimer's disease and, and we see that impact that that has on their families. We, we see in our society the, 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 the days of judgment from God where tornadoes and hurricanes and storms and hell falling from the sky. And we see these things devastating our, our lands. We, we see fires consuming thousands and thousands of acres of land and we see other parts flooding. Continue to go on, and, and besides all those, we, we see disasters and, and horrific things taking place in our country, like what happened last night in Orlando, Florida, where, where now 50 people or, or so are confirmed dead, and 53 are injured and in the, in the hospital, and, and you know the randomness shootings and, and terrorism and, and the violence that. have this, this message in the Bible to the elders and to the leaders and to the, the, the Christians as witnesses of the sufferings of Christ. As you received your salvation, when you called upon the name of God, when you called upon the name of Jesus the Christ, when you invited his Holy Spirit to come inside of you, you became a witness to what God And although there, there are so many things that happen in this world where we don't understand and we can't see how God is glorified. But God knows all things. God is almighty. He is all powerful. And he is true to his word. And the 
only, the only thing for certain with us and Christ is that we know without the question of a doubt in our hearts that when we call upon the name of the Lord, He gives us salvation. He gives us eternal life in glory. Whether that starts right now when we get saved, or whether that starts when you die and enter into heaven, it is something for you to decide. He says, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. The glory that is going to be going to be revealed is so is so beyond what we have. So beyond what we can imagine in this world. I mean, you know what joy feels like. You ever experienced joy in your life, things that make you happy? Can you tell you your happiest moment, your most joyful experience, and set it in eternity? I would imagine that that would be failing. To what God has in store for us. The glory that is going to be revealed. And he says, Shepherd the flock. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of, crown of glory. Likewise, unfading crown of glory. You know what God has in store for us, in store for us we really have a hard time imagining. Now, some, people, some people think, you know, because you can compare your good times and your bad times. And, and you, 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 you know what God has in store, but the thing is, good things for God, the, the leading people to Christ, to giving the comforting words, to standing there in support of, of someone going through situations, those suffering from sicknesses. Can you, can you imagine the, the families of, of these 50 victims that have passed away and the, the others that are in the hospital? Can you imagine what they're you imagine it's in Orlando. That's what I hope there are godly people with those families right now. I hope there is someone there representing God's grace and God's mercy and God's love in their lives. Because for 50 of those families, their loved one has been ripped from them, has been taken. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter what they were doing. One, one person made a decision to take life away from all of them. I hope and pray that God has his people there. People that truly know him. Not those that are out there to judge those people who or being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We're not there to judge the lifestyle. We're not there to condemn. But there to offer God's grace. To, there to offer them hope in the, in the devastating events that have happened to them. Exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would. You see, God wants us to love people. Love your neighbor. God wants us to love him. Love me first. And love your neighbor as I have loved you. How many times in your life have you graciously accepted someone who was judging you? 
regardless of what it was. I mean, when, when, when someone goes on to attack an issue, what's your, what are you going to do? You're going to protect yourself. You're going to walk away. You're going to avoid them. Or you're going to fight back. What you're not going to do is gracious, graciously receive those words. Because they're not given in love. They're not given in grace and mercy. Where, where would we be right now if God has, had not extended his love and his grace to us? Where would you be if God had spared you? If God had delivered you? If God had strengthened you? If God had Disaster, and, and it, it, it seems like judgment after judgment after judgment is happening in our world. And what that tells me is that God is calling this creation to shake up, to invite these people in. Have those fifty people who are gone. Who knows how many of them get to spend an eternity in glory? Or the other place. We don't know. But one man chose to take the lives of 50 individuals and 50 more have been injured. Some of those may not survive today. What right had that man to take away their choice? To take away their life? To take away their decisions? To take away the choice that God has given? Not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those who are in your charge, but by being examples to the flock. Being examples to the flock. And, you know, I, I don't know really how many examples it is it's when we practice our Christianity. And, and, and you know, I, I don't think being a Christian is natural. I think we have to work at it. I think we have to let, let, let it go of our selfishness of things that we want for me to actually enjoy the things that God wants for everyone. So we have to practice at being a Christian. How many of you have asked someone to come to church last week? How many of you have asked someone know that if you ask someone once a week, and after a month you ask them someone twice a week, and you feel that, that it would become easier to invite people to church. Why do you go to church? To learn about God. To worship and praise. To To experience the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ. To love with them, to experience joy with them, to know that there are sufferings with them, to be a part of the family that God has placed us in. That 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 gift that God gives you is They won't come if we don't invite them. They won't come and learn what it is to be a Christian if we don't show them what God has given us. I'm 
not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And it says to be humble. Don't be domineering. Don't be bossy. Don't be, don't be rude. He says, humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. How many of you need to know that God cares for you? Despite everything that happens to you in this world, for your sin. He was humiliated. Mocked. He with a spear. Nailed to a cross. He suffered physical and mental anguish because he loves you. And he wants you says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. There are many, many people in this world who do not have the Holy Spirit to protect them, to strengthen them, to give them Courage, or to give them love in times of despair, or loss, or tragedy, or disaster. But they do have the Christians. And if we are doing what we are supposed to, Verse 9 says, resist him, speaking of the devil, resist him, resist the despair, resist the loneliness, resist the hurt, resist the pain, and embrace the things that God has given you. Because the things that God has given you Resist him, firm, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering will be experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. You're not alone. God has people all over the world. After you have suffered God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. When you place yourself into the hands of God, when you give him your situations, when you rely on Firms you. He strengthens you. And he 
establishes you. God will do all the things for you that you cannot do on your own. How many of you know Christ? How many of you have experienced His grace and His love? How many of you have been carried through by His strength? that we know Show them the love of God. And invite them to know Him. Father God,